Hey everyone! In this video, we'll look more closely at how male and female gametophytes are produced. Our questions are How are the cells of male and female gametophytes formed? And What are the names and locations of these cells? Here is our diagram from last time with a basic view of how the male gametophyte, the pollen grain, is produced. This entire process can be considered pollen development. The first part of pollen development is microsporogenesis, where the microsporocyte produces the microspores. Then we have microgametogenesis, where each microspore becomes a pollen grain. The microsporocyte is also called the pollen mother cell, since its daughter cells will ultimately become pollen grains. First, let's take a closer look at microsporogenesis, or how meiosis produces the microspores. Microsporogenesis starts with the diploid microsporocyte. Shown here is an actual microsporocyte. And here is one as a drawing. The microsporocyte has a diploid nucleus, or in other words, a nucleus with two sets of chromosomes. The chromosomes are visualized here by staining with DAPI, which is a compound that binds to chromosomes and glows when you hit it with a certain wavelength of light. It's an easy way to see where the chromosomes are and therefore where the nucleus is within a cell. The microsporocyte enters meiosis. By metaphase 1, the chromosomes have condensed and lined up. During meiosis 1 and 2, four chromosome sets are produced. But instead of each set being sorted into four separate cells, like with sperm production in humans, each of the four sets of chromosomes is sorted into its own nucleus, but the four nuclei stay within the same cell. So, instead of four separate cells, we have four haploid nuclei, all within one cell. Here's a drawing of this cell following meiosis, showing the four haploid nuclei Next, each of these nuclei develop their own cytoplasm and cell membrane in a process called cellularization, resulting in four cells within one cell wall. This structure is called a tetrad. Here is one microspore. The tetrad, with its four microspores, is the end product of microsporogenesis. Next, we'll examine the details of gametogenesis. First, the cell wall containing the microspores is broken down, and each individual microspore now enters gametogenesis. Here's one microspore, also stained with DAPI. And here's a drawing. The microspore is basically an immature pollen grain, but unlike later developmental stages of pollen, the microspore is made of only one cell. So the microspore is also called monocellular pollen. Remember, the nucleus of the microspore is haploid. Monocellular pollen undergoes mitosis, but again only the nucleus divides resulting in one cell with two nuclei inside of it. The smaller nucleus is the generative nucleus, which undergoes cellularization to form its own cell called the generative cell. The larger nucleus is the vegetative nucleus and controls the vegetative cell which is basically everything in the pollen grain except the generative cell. 
So the pollen grain is now made of two cells, the generative cell within the vegetative cell. So we now call it bicellular pollen. Here's a nice image of bicellular pollen. Here is the vegetative nucleus, and here is the generative cell within the vegetative cell. During the next and last round of mitosis, which involves the generative cell only, the generative cell undergoes mitosis to produce two new cells called sperm cells that are still within the vegetative cell. Here's an image of the resulting cell. With the vegetative nucleus and the sperm cells. As their name suggests, the sperm cells are the male gametes. The sperm cells are small and have condensed chromosomes, which is why they're so bright. So now we have a tricellular pollen grain. The tricellular pollen grain undergoes more changes before it's completely mature, but this is basically what a mature pollen grain looks like. These three cells within the pollen grain, the two sperm cells enclosed within the vegetative cell, make up the male gametophyte, which is the end product of microgametogenesis. So, we can see how the replication of nuclei and the subsequent cellularization of those nuclei produces the microspores within the tetrad. And we see that the replication of nuclei and cellularization also produces the two sperm cells found within the vegetative cell. Next, we'll discuss the development of the female gametophyte housed within the embryo sac. Within the ovule, the diploid megasporocyte, also called the megaspore mother cell, undergoes meiosis to form the surviving megaspore, though in some species more than one megaspore survives. Here, starting with the surviving megaspore, we'll examine development of the female gametophyte, which is made of several cells. These cells develop within a structure called the embryo sac. So this line represents the embryo sac that houses the cells that make up the female gametophyte. So let's see how megagametogenesis produces these cells, starting with the surviving megaspore. Here is the surviving megaspore with its haploid nucleus. The nucleus divides by mitosis, a first time, a second time, and a third time. So now eight haploid nuclei are within one cell. These eight nuclei migrate, three of them to one end, three to the other end, and two to the middle. These nuclei then undergo cellularization. This cell is the egg cell. The two next to it are synergid cells. The three cells at the other end of the embryo sac are called antipodal cells. And the two nuclei in the middle are called the polar nuclei. Only one cell forms around both polar nuclei and is called the central cell because it's in the center. The two haploid polar nuclei eventually fuse so that what was formerly the polar nuclei becomes the diploid nucleus of the central cell. This nucleus is now called the secondary nucleus. However, in some species, this fusion doesn't occur until during fertilization. So now, we have the final form of the female gametophyte, which includes 
the egg cell, the synergid cells, the antipodal cells, and the central cell. Seven cells within the embryo sac. If we look at an actual mature ovule under a microscope, the embryo sac is about here, with the synergid cells, the egg cell, and the central cell labeled in this image. So, those are the cells of the female gametophyte within the embryo sac. Let's quickly compare the male and female gametophytes. The male gametophyte is two sperm cells within the vegetative cell, which is controlled by the vegetative nucleus. And these three cells are within the pollen grain. The female gametophyte consists of seven cells and is within the embryo sac, which is inside the ovule. Both arise from the mitosis of a haploid cell, and production of both involves replication of nuclei, which then undergo cellularization, forming cells within another cell. Okay, that's it for this video. With some practice, you should be able to remember how the cells that make up the gametophytes are formed, and their names and locations within their respective gametophytes. We'll discuss the function of these cells in the next video when we examine what happens when the male and female gametophytes meet during double fertilization. See you then.